Hey, aloha, and welcome to Stan Energy Man here, broadcasting live from Honolulu, uh, from the ThinkTech Studios in the Pioneer Plaza building. Um, I'm Stan Osterman from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies, and uh, we do everything on this show that talks about energy. But one thing we don't talk much about is uh, the subject of maritime and around the ports kind of energy. So our guest this week uh, specializes in that, and I want to emphasize that, uh, you know, when we look in Hawaii at what causes most of our pollution, um, we don't really get to see much of it because the trade winds normally blow it out to sea and we just don't see it. But if Hawaii had uh, mostly southerly winds pushing the pollution back into our city, we'd really notice it a lot. It would get trapped up against the mountains and, and we'd really notice all the pollution that comes from ships and the, what we call drayage trucks or the day trucks that move containers around our city and around the ports. In Los Angeles, they're in Los, in La, uh, Long Beach, um, their ports are huge, and they, they move millions of containers a year. And they have a, a serious pollution problem and, and have over the years. Um, and some of the folks just decided that uh, it was time to do something about it. And one of those folks is uh, Mr. Victor LaRosa, who uh, established a company or works at a company called Total Transportation Services Incorporated. And uh, he's our guest today, and he's going to talk to us about how he and his company are, are helping reduce that uh, high-end pollution problem in and around the ports. Because not only do the ships pollute uh, a lot because of the huge amount of energy they need to move through the water, they, and in Honolulu, they actually still run their engines to create their own electricity. But those trucks that run around the ports, and in Honolulu, the trucks that run around town to deliver containers, they are actually operating in the stop-and-go mode, which is the least efficient range for any of those engines those uh, gas or diesel engines to run in. They're, they're the least efficient, they're the most polluting. So Vic, welcome to the show today. I really appreciate you being on and taking the time to, to share with us some of your experience. Um, could you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your company and, and how you got started and, and what you're doing? Sure, thanks for having me on. Um, I, I've been in the trucking business my entire life. I actually was recruited out of college by a trucking company. Um, I've been in Los Angeles for about 37 years. We founded the company that we are currently running back in the, uh, to, uh, the uh, late uh, 80s, early 90s. And we specialize in transporting ocean containers for large re importers and retailers, uh, people like Target, Amazon, uh, Ralph Lauren, J. Crew, people, people of that nature, very, very large importers. Um, we started to address this pollution issue back in the in 2006 2007 when the ports began examining just how much pollution were caused by the ships and the trucks and in southern california we have a little bit of a unique situation because uh, we are some we are in a valley and our pollution tends to stay in that valley and then the sun has a multiplying effect on those on those uh, those pollutants. So back in 2007, we got very active with environmental groups and we got very active with state agencies and we started to study the problem. And we made a commitment back then that we were going to go to a zero emission fleet. The issue was back in 2007, there was no technology to support that, uh, that, that fleet. So over the last 10 years, we have been working very closely with integrators, with developers, with truck manufacturers, and experimenting with all different forms of technology, from natural gas to battery to fuel cell. And we are currently starting to make the first significant uh, changes in the fleet to get to near zero emission and then eventually the zero emission when the uh, technology is ready for prime time. I know that one of the drawbacks of uh, being a first, re first adopter, um, as you talked about you know, getting into this business around 2006, that's, that's when Hawaii really started to seriously look at alternative fuel vehicles and looked at hydrogen and plug-in uh, vehicles. Um, but one of the serious problems with it is when you're an early adopter, a lot of the equipment and the fuel is expensive. Huh? How does your company, um, how has it been handling that challenge? And do you see that as just the price you've got to pay to, to, to do clean? Or is it a, an economy of scale thing where you, you foresee the, the price of the equipment dropping down as more and more people adopt it? 
understand that, that a truer statement couldn't be made. We have made significant investments in failed technologies. The, the initial uh, natural gas engines were underpowered, and we had made a significant investment in those engines, and we did not do well financially with that. But we did not give up. We met with the agencies, and we told them, listen, we want to support your, our goals to get there, but you have to help us. You have to give us the ability to test the technology before we go full, uh, you know, full bore in implementing it. And for the last 10 years, we have tested 50% of all the new technology that's come into the market. We've been heavily helped and subsidized uh, by the agencies, and it, most of the subsidies go to the developers and the integrators. We will then take the equipment, test it, and generally our hydrogen fuel is subsidized, our natural gas is not subsidized, uh, uh, our electricity is not subsidized, but it, it, that's, that's not an overbearing factor. The overbearing factor is, is going out and buying new equipment that doesn't work. What's your, what's your sense of the state of technology now, particularly with hydrogen fuel cells and natural gas? Um, you know, we, we have several communities that are working hard with uh, electric buses and things like that. Um, but what's your sense for the hydrogen and natural gas? The, the, the natural, we are on the fifth generation of natural gas engines, and we have finally arrived at an engine that we've been testing for the last three years, the 12 liter uh, uh, near uh, zero knock uh, Cummins Westport engine. And that engine is bulletproof. We just ordered 40 of those vehicles, and we're going to probably be ordering another 40 of those vehicles. Uh, the test and Cummins worked very, very closely with us in, in day to day in making sure that those trucks uh, had no mechanical or, or performance issues. That's why we went out and made, made the investment. And what was the, what um, was the big, big breakthrough on the CNG um, genesis as they moved to this current state of the art? What, what was the big uh, jump in technology that got them to where you, you can really appreciate them? They, they upped the power in the engines. We were, when they, they first introduced the, uh, first generation, it was an 8.9 liter engine. It was really spec to handle about a 66,000 pound gross vehicle weight. Um, uh, form. The 12 liters now can handle the 80,000 pounds. What was happening with the 8.9 liter engine is that we were tearing those engines up. We were, they were underpowered and we were chilling them uh, from a uh, from a productivity standpoint. Okay. So, um, did they do it like with turbocharging and increasing the the uh, cylinder bore? Yes, they increase the they, they increase the performance of the engine. Okay. Okay. How about hydrogen? What are some of the breakthroughs in hydrogen that you've noticed over the last few years? We were we were we. Back in about 2008, we got involved with a, a integrator that was just raising some funds and starting up with proof of concept. Unfortunately, the integrator uh, could make it, could make a run of it uh, go of it financially. So we've been kind of quiet on the hydrogen front until the last two or three years, and now we have a couple of a couple of manufacturers step up. Um, you're familiar with US Hybrid. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, TransPower. You're familiar with Hydrogenics, uh -huh. they're a manufacturer of fuel cells. You're familiar with Kenworth, you're familiar with Toyota. Uh, they are all now jumping into the fuel cell arena. We have the first fuel cell manufactured by, first manufactured by Kenworth, the first truck with a fuel cell in it. And we've been experimenting with that truck for the last uh, two to three months, and we're finding it to be very, very promising. I just read this morning um, in one of my newsletters that, I, and I believe it was Cummins, it, it might be uh, someone else, but it was a big diesel company that just bought out Hydrogenics. So um, that kind of sends a signal to well, me that, yeah, um, I'll forward that to you when I get back to my office. But um, 
I was really surprised to see that. I sent it to a boss at US Hybrid, but um, I just see a lot of activity in hydrogen going on right now. Um, on the battery electric side, um, I know a lot of folks have been using the battery uh, vehicles and, and they seem to be a good choice for the short runs and the uh, you know, not too hilly terrain. Uh, have you been finding them satisfactory or are there, are there infrastructure or charging drawbacks that lead you to kind of go to more conventional fueling like uh, natural gas or hydrogen? The, the uh, battery truck, the battery, I drive a Volt, my, son drive, my sons drive a Volt. The battery technology in vehicles is great. I mean, we're there. The battery technology in buses are great because you, you, you know the, your route and you know how many hours you're going to be on that route. In our environment, battery technology is a little tough. Think about uh, having to move, let's say, 250 containers today. I don't know where the next container is going. I don't know if it's going to be a 15-mile run or a 60-mile run. So it's very difficult for me to incorporate that battery technology into our fleet. Although we are experimenting with the batteries and we're using them in, a, in a, an isolated area, we try to use them in an isolated area, with shuttle type of work, but they're just not ready at, for the Class A prime time activity. Um, the combination of fuel cell and battery, we feel are going to be the winner in, in the long run. We don't think any one technology is going to win, but we think that that, that that combination is going to get us over range anxiety on the battery. Now, don't forget, Stan, we have to run those trucks 18 to 20 hours yeah. every day. It's not... It's not like any other port in the country. We run two ships, so we have to, you know, we usually we can, the, the battery technology work with, we can only get one shift out of. Right. And then we have to park the truck. Yeah, I was going to say, I noticed in yeah. your literature that you run a long two shifts. They're not just two shifts, but a long two shifts. In the military, we used to run two or three shifts, but they were all eight-hour shifts. Yours looked a lot longer than that, and I was, that's why I was curious about the charging cycle on your trucks, because... You know, like you say, when you have the range you've got to worry about, then you've got the time that the vehicle is going to be down for charging. And then if you have all rapid chargers, then you've got high infrastructure costs by putting in new transformers and things like that. So um, I think in some conditions, like you say, where it's real predictable, um, the battery works great. The technology is great. Um, are you familiar with Nikola Motors and their concept and how they're going to try and operate trucks? Are you, are you familiar at all with um, Trevor Milton and what he's trying to do? We have an order in for 100 of those trucks. Wow, that's we've cool. been we've been um, invited over to Phoenix, and we've been truck testing, driving the truck, and you know, just it's in a very very preliminary stage of development. Uh, but we're very very active. They are now coming out to our facilities and looking at what we do in the ports, and uh, we think that there's there's going to be some potential. Uh, not, I don't want to use the word partnership, but some potential, potential cooperative um, uh, uh, programs that we can work on together. Great. Well, Vic, we're going to take a quick break here and, and let some of our other shows uh, advertise their, uh, their program. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about Nikola Motors and some of the things we can look forward to in the future. Perfect. Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po. Mabuhay and aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Hey, 
welcome back to Stan the Energy Man on my lunch hour, of course. And I decided to wear my glasses today because I wanted to kind of look intellectual. So I'm talking to Vic uh, La Rosa there in California. He's a pretty sharp guy. He knows a lot about uh, trucking for sure. And uh, we, we want to capitalize off of that. We don't, you know, in Hawaii, we don't have the big 18 wheelers that run long distances uh, like you do on the mainland there, Vic. But we do have a lot of drayage trucks and that class of trucks. You know, no sleeper cab, just uh, just hauling stuff around. Because the farthest you can go on this island is about 30 miles before you run into the water again. And um, But we move a lot of containers uh, around our town. So uh, let's let's get back to Nikola Motors. What do you, you know, that's a pretty novel concept with leasing the vehicles and lease, and the fuels included in the vehicles. What are some of the things you like and what are the things you'd, you'd like to see them improve on in their model um, that you think uh, with all your background would make it a great model, not just for the mainland, but for islands like Hawaii. Um, the current model that Nicholas developed is really built for the long haul operation. Um, we have finally got through to them and said, look, we don't need this much, these fancy bells and whistles for a short or for a drainage operation, which generally runs within 60 miles. And in your case, 35 miles. So we're we're asking them to come out and work with us and kind of scale. We don't want to scale the technology down, but we want to scale the bells and whistles down to make it a much more comfortable truck for the shorter haul operation and for our drivers. And we think that it, they and they are very very enthusiastic about it. And we think that the it shows a lot of promise. We do like the model with the fuel included because um, it, it, the infrastructure, which you touched on earlier is very difficult, both from the battery side and from the hydrogen side. That's why ports are great petri dishes for testing, because we don't have those long-haul runs. You know, we can get the truck back to a terminal generally every night, and we can generally store or house fuel at those, uh, at those locations in order to conduct business the next day. It's not like we're sending the truck 1,500 miles down the road. Great. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're working with them. I'm. I'm happy to hear that you're uh, on order for a hundred of their trucks because, yeah, I. I think he's got a great model, I'm, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that uh, he'll be able to make it all happen and, and keep all the finances straight and the production straight. I mean, he's he's biting off a, a big chunk of uh, a mission there. That uh, I'm. I'm hats off to him. That's that's a, a lot of work that he's he's pulling together with a lot of companies and a lot of investors and. Uh, a lot of potential customers, so I'm, I'm excited to see him get going, and, and I'd, I'd like to get some more feedback from you later on how his equipment works in a couple of years. But what's your, what's your view of the future um, in terms of transportation, electric transportation, especially on the trucking side? Um, do you see a particular niche for battery plug-in only or long haul only? Or I mean, kind of paint us a picture of uh, Vic's world in the next 15 years on electric truck transportation. Or CNG. Well, we think we, we've done a, I'm sorry, Stan. Or CNG. I didn't mean to, to boot them off. Right now, CNG is uh, really inexpensive on the mainland. It's, it's got to be a good, uh, a good fit if you've got the trucks at work, right, too. Sometimes CNG gets sold a little short because we're starting to use a tremendous amount of renewable natural gas coming from landfills, coming from uh, biodigesters. And the nice thing about that renewable is that it does not add any additional carbon to the atmosphere because it's already, it's just being broken down and we're just, you know, re reusing it in a different form. And we have an abundance of that. You know, I've heard, I've heard statistics that we have a hundred years of supply in our, in our landfills and, and our, uh, uh, you know, uh, garbage dumps. Um, so, so, we don't cut, we don't discount natural gas. We have made we are, we may have made a significant investment in it. We're using it as our bridge because we really don't believe that within the next five years that we will have a very very stable battery or hydrogen model for the class eight truck, not okay. for other modes of transportation, just for the class eight. So that's why we're staying very close. We're making our investment in CNG for the next five years in order to continue our business. And then as we see breakthroughs or, you know, winners in the hydrogen and battery technology, we will begin to invest in that as well. But we don't think that there's going to be one winner. 
We think that the, there, it's going to be a combination of technologies. We're even starting to experiment with CNG fuel cells trucks. So we think that there's all types of uh, possibilities out there that are going to help us get to where we, where, where we want to go. Yeah, the, a lot of people don't realize that you have solid oxide fuel cells and other fuel cells that use methane, pure methane, which is natural gas, uh, to run instead of a hydrogen fuel cell using a methane for your fuel. So you're right, that, that's another technology that we haven't really looked into a whole lot for transportation. I know they're using it a lot in right. fixed uh, stationary transportation for like uh, cell phone towers and, and things like that for backup. Um, but yeah, that's, that's another great possibility. Do you have any insight on the shipping side? I know you're, you're a truck guy, but on the shipping side, you, you, you hang around the ports and you work with all the folks like the, the uh, air quality folks in California. What's happening on the shipping side to, to make those folks um, either use shore power or um, improve the, the big ships uh, propulsion systems and power systems? That's also in a very, very experimental stage. We're starting to see some of the, the short haul carriers, especially Jones Act carriers, people that run to Hawaii and to Puerto Rico and places like that, starting to invest in CNG, uh, LNG and CNG engines on their ships. Um, and that's a very, very positive step. Um, this year, the uh, IMO is, is uh, requ requiring that all of shipping, the shipping lines throughout the world go to low diesel low sulfur diesel fuel, which is going to significantly drive up the price of diesel because uh, it, it's more expensive to produce a low sulfur diesel. Uh, so th those steamship lines are, uh, th I mean, yeah, those steamship lines are starting to make the investment and starting to uh, make the breakthroughs uh, on, the, on the environmental front. In California, cold ironing, which, which is when we plug the ship in, we have made unbelievable strides. Most of our terminals and most of our berths plug those ships in when they come in. Now, there are some technologies like scrubbers that they put over the stack of the ship, and we hear good things and bad things about that technology. You know, once you take that, that pollution, what do you do with it? Does it end up back in the ocean, or you know, how do you actually scrub it? So we don't know yet what the outcome is, is going to be there. But we do see a significant amount of investment, and we see a significant amount of attention given to the issue. Okay. The, the ships, do they use, like, turbine technology, or are they using um, internal combustion engines like the big diesel trucks, except on a bigger scale? Both. Both? Okay, yes. We we heard of a, a company. Right, I, I was, I was uh, brought to the attention of a company, I think it's called Climon. They have a two meter, it's out of Sweden, and they have a, a box that's like two meters cubed. And um, it's a, it uses waste heat uh, from internal combustion or turbine engines. And they're saying that um, they're actually doing work with some of the ships. And if they just take their waste heat from those kind of engines, they can provide 20% of the electricity for a cruise ship just from the waste heat off those engines. So... You know, that's something else I know that they're looking into as well that, that gives me some hope that those ships will be a lot cleaner coming into our ports here in Hawaii. Yeah, definitely. Well, how about for the rest of the, uh, on the trucking side, do you have any of those, um, your same philosophy in California with the alternative fuel vehicles, are you doing that in any of your other operations on the East Coast? Yeah, um, we're... We're moving, we just made an acquisition in Seattle. And we're going to be moving our concept up there as well because, as you know, the West Coast seems to be a little bit more progressive when it comes to uh, clean air technology. And our plan is to uh, introduce it into all of the ports that we work in. So we will be, um, over the next five to seven years, we will be moving the newer technology into all of our operations. Okay, great. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap up. We've got a couple minutes left here. You know, kind of give us a picture of where your company is going in the future. You've got, um, you've got uh, some of those Nikola motor trucks lined up. You're kind of using CNG as your bridge. Um, are there any other things that uh, you'd like to talk about in terms of near term on your company that, that are really exciting for you? Um, the near term, you know, 
our biggest or uh, one of our major concentrations now is safety, and um, we're bringing in the technology that automatically breaks the trucks. We're bringing in uh, uh, side cameras. We're bringing in uh, uh, introducing uh, technology for the driver when the driver starts to become fatigued in the truck. So we're we short term we're we're trying to make this driver experience as as good as possible and as safe as possible. So safety is a major concern for us because we believe one day we're going to transition to autonomous vehicles. We don't see a driver coming out of the vehicle anytime soon, but we think that the truck is going to be pretty sophisticated, almost like an airplane, where it's going to be able to kind of manage itself. But you're still going to need someone in there in case of an emergency. So we are gearing our company and we're working with some uh, uh, developers of the technology to try to, to get there, to get to the next step. Hmm. Again, combining air quality, safety, and autonomous operation of the truck. Yeah, the, the artificial intelligence, AI, and the 5G stuff that's coming down the road is going to help in that area a lot, as well as maintenance. Have you, have you found any real advantages on the maintenance side to any of these technologies, do you find the electric drivetrains to be easier to take care of or less maintenance? We're fine, yeah, on, on, yes, absolutely. The electric trucks are way less maintenance. Even the, even the uh, fuel cell is a little bit different because the technology is so new and so tricky. Um, and the thing we like about CNG, too, is that we, we don't have to use the, the, uh, the death uh, uh, fluids in the, uh, that you have to use in a diesel engine. And we're seeing less maintenance cost and less uh, filtration cost in that technology as well. And the fuel on the natural gas side is generally, is generally a little bit less expensive than diesel. Great. Well, Vic, we've run through our 30 minutes here, but it's been awesome talking to you. And I, I feel like I've filled up my clue bag, as we used to say in the military. Um, I really appreciate you spending some time with us. And I hope the viewers out there find uh, some of what you talked about really important, especially like I say, here in Hawaii, we don't see the pollution as much, but it's still there. In fact, unfortunately, it's probably right. mostly going right into the ocean, and that's making us ignore the, pro the problem and kick it down the road, and we really shouldn't be doing it. We should be following your lead and taking all of our ports and making them as clean as possible. So thanks for joining us today, Vic, and uh, I'll be talking to you again, especially I'd love to hear when you get your first Nikola truck in a couple of years. Uh, I'd love to come back and talk to you then and uh, get your impression no on how those things are and working. And when you're in California, please come and visit us so we can show you and give you a ride in some of this technology. That'd be awesome. Thanks, Vic. And uh, thanks to all the viewers today for watching uh, Stanley Energy Man on Think Tech Hawaii. And we'll see you again next Friday. Aloha.